this week on Forward. I think it's important that people understand that to be an impactful, to be a profoundly impactful third party, we don't have to be the dominant party. We don't have to have a majority. You know, just a few votes that are genuinely able to coalesce and do what do what's right for America could make a huge difference in the functionality of our entire nation. We need candidates who can solve local problems as well as as a those good people. mayor is worth his or her weight in gold. You know what I mean? Like Abs- a, yes, a good, yes, a good yes, school yes. board. As a parent, I mean, I've got a yeah. child in public school. Like a good school board is worth his weight in gold. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the podcast, former Lieutenant Governor of the state of Massachusetts, former President of Babson College, and brand new Executive Chair of the Forward Party, Carrie Healy. Welcome back, Carrie. Thank you, Andrew. It's great to be back in this position, working with you. Yeah, you are uh, exactly what Forward has been looking for in an Executive Chair. We're going to talk a little bit about that role and your vision uh, for 2024. Um, Now, those of you who are avid listeners to the podcast, uh, Carrie came on last year when she joined Forward as a board member. So I'm not going to rehash her extensive, awesome (laughs) history there. In many ways, this could be like Carrie Healy uh, part two. So if you want to check out part one, just, uh, you know, click on the archives. Um, But let's give people a very brief refresher um, about what brought you to Forward. So, so Andrew, I came to Forward because I had for many, many years been feeling that the, the two-party system wasn't working for me, and then suddenly it really wasn't working for America. Well. <laughs> it wasn't working so, for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so it's absolutely. one thing if I personally would prefer to have uh, an alternative to the Republicans and the Democrats, but it, it's a different thing when you start seeing the two parties pulling the country apart, really really harming the fabric of our nation and our culture and, and our, our care for one another uh, in the way that, that this two-party system is doing now. So for years, uh, I was what you could have characterized as a, a, uh, an establishment Republican who was a Northeast-style Republican. In Massachusetts, that we were sure. A Massachusetts like Republican, a Rockefeller Republican, a Weld Republican, you know, the, the kind of person who is uh, very concerned about budgets, very concerned about fiscal responsibility and making sure that government is efficient and effective, but at the same time would like to see a lot more compassion in our social policy, you know, than was always exercised when you were just keeping your, your eye on that budget all the time. And and I didn't like to see how social policy and 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 those sort of social issues had become so prominent in the uh, in the conservative rhetoric uh, to the extent that marriage equality and any kind of flexibility around um, reproductive rights was really being squeezed out. And I had long been a, a supporter for reproductive rights, and I was an early uh, person to embrace uh, marriage equality or or some sort of expression of of, of that, you know, for uh, all of our communities. And so I was hoping that the Republican Party would moderate with me, and they didn't. Instead, they went in the opposite No no wonder you felt homeless, Carrie. Geez, you were a pro-choice, pro-gay marriage, uh, compassionate person who likes the numbers to work out. And you're like, huh. (laughs) This isn't working for me anymore. Right. So so I felt I felt alienated, progressively alienated from my party after, you know, 2012 and and i began in 2016 really thinking about what would it take you know to have an alternative that would work for the people of america because i i saw this growing group of independents and now as as you know it's it's 49% of the voting public in america doesn't want to be a republican or a democrat yep. they want to have a choice they're trying to find a candidate that somehow approximates what they believe in yep. and they can't find it consistently on one side or the other and so you know, really, independents are the majority now of you know, the majority party of America. And yet the they don't have a majority, Carrie. We're looking at totally like, what the heck is going on. Look at what happened. Look at what just happened in New Hampshire. Yep. You know, we had a, a, a completely dysfunctional primary system. First of all, uh, the Democrats boycotted it. You know, the, the you know, incumbent president 
completely boycotts it. Um, there have been no debates on, on the Democratic side. Um, on the Republican side, the, the debates were a farce because the leader uh, refused show to up. engage. Yeah, no show at all. Up, just tried to pretend that it was a sideshow um, that, that allowed people to think that the Democratic process was moving forward while, in fact, you know, there was no intention of allowing that process to go forward or, or legitimating that in any way. And, you know, my concern is that the two candidates that came out of that primary were people who have not debated, who have not presented themselves uh, you know, to the American public in, in a traditional democratic way uh, in terms of democratic process. And and most of the people who wanted to vote in that primary were independents and they yeah. had to figure out what to do. So, yeah. so I came to forward thinking this is an opportunity to, that where these three groups, you know, that had all been looking for democratic reform, who'd all been working in that third party space, um, wanted to coalesce. And, and there are a number of other groups, I think, who could coalesce with us as well um, to start building out this alternative for those disenfranchised voters who were probably showing up in New Hampshire just going, what do I do today? How, you know, how do I how do I make my vote count? Yeah, I, I, I tried to uh, spell out just how um, unrepresentative our primary system is right now, Carrie. And so uh, I found that maybe 530,000 people have cast votes in two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, uh, in a country of 340 million, let's say. So, you know, that, that comes down to um, less than one fifth of one percent of Americans have voted. <laughs> And then they say, it's over. It's over. It's- <laughs> yes, these are our nominees, it's over. But but in truth, it's over because we we have a system now that allows this to happen. And and so they're they're not wrong that it's over, but it shouldn't be. Um well we can go into what's going on in the primaries. Um but the 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 system really uh isn't about the voice of the people anymore. It's not not about democracy. As you say, it's like not about even people showing up to debates. Uh like that there's the, this this very uh, unrepresentative party machinery um, that is saying, here are your choices. And people are increasingly frustrated and fed up. And so you're seeing people trying to build alternatives. Um, a lot, you know, like us, I mean, we're not participating in the presidential in that fashion, um, but we certainly understand the frustration a great deal. Yes. Um, so I, I think that uh, your story is, I'm sure, familiar to a lot of people uh, watching or listening to this, um, you know, like, they could be someone on the Democratic side or like, you know what, I don't feel very well represented or heard, but it could certainly be someone on the Republican side. Um, what I refer to as the traditional or sane wing of the Republican Party that's not a fan of Trump. And, you know, I, I dare say that uh, you have a lot of friends who are in that camp. Um, so since we're not going to be focused on the presidential, in my opinion, for very smart reasons, uh, and the way our presidential system works right now is you're likely to empower the opposite of yourself. <laughs> like if, if, um, so uh, what does Ford want to do in 24, since this is obviously an enormous year? Yeah, this is, this is a, a, a difficult time for us right now because we both want to have our long-term goals and we don't want to lose any momentum working toward those long-term goals. But we realize that the situation right now requires action. I think everyone feels this, you know, really strong call to action in 2024 because what we see happening in front of our face is not acceptable and, and is a real threat to democracy. And so the question is, what, what role can we play as a nascent party that, that isn't ready to, to field a candidate who could run and win, you know, in the presidential race? And if we ran and didn't win, as you mentioned, we would probably ultimately be tipping the election in what we would consider to be the wrong direction. So yeah. I think, you know, so we're very, very conscious of the fact that we don't want to be a spoiler. We don't want to do anything in 2024 that could, you know, be in any way construed as, you know, causing us to move in an anti-democratic direction. So what can we do? Uh, we have both a short-term strategy and a long-term strategy. Our short-term strategy is called the re- reverse coattail strategy. Yes, and so, I love the reverse coattail like strategy. Reverse, reverse coattails. Okay, so the reverse coattail stra- strategy leverages the fact that there are 500 and, and what is it, 30,000, 530,000 down ballot seats uh, below the, the president and the vice president uh, election. And 70% of those run un- unopposed. And another 10% of it just goes unfilled. And Nuts. so- 
Yeah. Which is nuts because, you know, if you think about how dependent our country is on those volunteers, on people coming forward and saying that they will you know, give their time, their energies, their talents to help run the country. The fact that we need a half a million people to step up and help run the country and it's just not happening or just the bare minimum of, of the number of people who we need are stepping up. Um, is is really sad, and so we we hope you know as as the forward party to enable and encourage uh, any number of people to step forward in their local communities, whether it's running for school board or planning board or running for mayor or city councilor, whether it's running for your state legislature. In many states, that can be even be a part time position, and and there are just innumerable places where you can contribute, and we're hoping that that forward candidate becomes the ideal civic leader. And that that is the kind of person who brings responsible voters with them to the uh, to the ballot. So for example, if you or I were running for city councilor in our town, uh, we would undoubtedly have a number of friends who are like-minded who would come out and, and vote for us because they think of us as responsible people who are going to do the right thing for our community. And that's what we're looking for. That's the reverse coattail strategy. So we're hoping that all those people who are perhaps registered independents and and who are discouraged by what's happening and who might not show up and vote for whatever the best outcome is for America will be motivated if they have candidates. A friend, on, someone the, they a know. Friend, a friend, someone they know and trust on the ballot. And once they're in that ballot, you know, once they're there voting, they're going to vote the whole, you know, spectrum of candidates, but they might be drawn there because a candidate who they know decided to run for local office. And and we're hoping that by filling those, we can really get the turnout uh, to be much more robust among the sensible people who are the majority of America. This podcast is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is a little like walking your dog in public without a leash. Most of the time it might work out, but then that one time your dog could run away or get dog napped, it's better to take a little bit of care, especially when it's as simple as using ExpressVPN. When I log on to the internet, I just click on ExpressVPN and I get beamed on through an encrypted network, through a server someplace. I have no idea where it is, but then no one else does either. It's great. They can't track you, they can't buy and sell your data, you know it's secure, and you can get content from other parts of the world, so you can be kind of international and cosmopolitan. If that sounds good to you, right now you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free at expressvpn.com slash yang. That's expressvpn.com slash yang, expressvpn.com slash yang. We all know that the national election is probably not going to be decided by uh, folks in New York or California or Massachusetts. It's going to be decided by voters in Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania. And so the reverse coattail strategy is about getting dozens, hundreds of local candidates in those swing states to run for local office and then if they draw, let's say, 50 sane voters uh, with them apiece and you had 300 candidates in those swing states, you might boost the sane non-extremist vote by 15,000 in a race that might get decided by 50,000, uh, the same way that 2020 got decided by 43,000. We have a very bizarre system where uh, out of the tens of millions of votes cast, um, it's really going to come down to a handful of votes in a handful of swing states. In a few places. And it always does. It always does. And so it is It is really important uh, for everyone to vote in this upcoming election. Uh, certainly everyone listening to this podcast, everyone interested in, in the sorts of things that we're discussing, they, you must vote. You must get out. And you have to think about, is there a way that I can contribute, for example, by being a candidate as well? Yeah, so uh, we're going to be recruiting and enlisting dozens, maybe even hundreds of local candidates, uh, particularly in swing states and in states where forward is very active, but anywhere. 
Uh, so if that resembles you and you are listening to this, do go to forwardparty.com, click on your local state chapter and reach out to us. Uh, we have resources available uh, and uh, even folks like me and Lieutenant Governor Healy and uh, Governor Christy Todd Whitman and John Kingston and Chris Novoselic, uh, who's going to be doing something interesting this cycle. Um, well, we're all going to try and help you make the case to your local community. And we think we can we can do a couple of things. One, we might get someone awesome elected locally, but two, we might draw uh, the right kind of voter to the polls to avert a very, very bad outcome in November. Yeah. And our goal is to get at least 300 of these candidates nationally, but to get them definitely in those swing states in particular. And, you know, 300 should be the floor. You know, we'd love to have many more. You know, yeah. but um, but but we we want to at least get going. And and the, now for the longer term strategy, which is you know really much more interesting, is a lot of these candidates are actually interested in running for Congress, and and so we can see that over time we could build up a small small group of Fordists uh, in Congress uh, and a group of only five to ten could make such a difference if Congress continues to be so evenly divided as it is today. Yeah. So, you know, the fulcrum strategy, which is a longer term strategy, is having that power in Congress of a few independents who have common beliefs and who could actually be the deciding factor in choosing every Speaker of the House, in making sure which bills pass and which ones don't, you know, just a few votes that are genuinely able to coalesce and do what do what's right for America could make a huge difference in the functionality of our entire nation. And so we are in particular interested um, in having good candidates who want to step forward and take the risk of running for Congress, because the sooner we could create that that cohort, that caucus of, of Fordists uh, in Congress, I think the better uh, America is going to be. Yeah, I joke all the time, Carrie. Uh, how many U.S. senators would it take to uh, form this kind of fulcrum? And they think about it for a second and they think two. And it's like, yeah, two, two, two. two. Yeah. I mean, maybe even one. And, you know, and, <laughs> and literally not fewer than a dozen in in the House. Congress. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and and there are there are uh, opportunities. Uh, you know, there are going to be people running. Um, even as independents, uh, this cycle, um, and and so this is to me a very achievable goal and vision, particularly as more and more Americans get fed up uh, with this increasingly dysfunctional, unrepresentative two-party system. I think it's important that people understand that to be an impactful, to be a profoundly impactful third party, we don't have to be the dominant party. We don't have to have a majority totally. uh, in the house. We just have to have enough so that we always have to be consulted, so that we can always be a sanity check on yes. what's going on. We can always fulcrum be a of sanity. Force. Maybe we should call ourselves the fulcrum of sanity, Carrie. <laughs> um, but I, I joke all the time that we don't need 51%. What do we need? Maybe five, six, seven, eight percent. Uh, and if we get to that level, we actually can help turn things around. And I think that that's achievable. And I think that people can look at that and, and see that that's achievable. People pour money into uh, congressional really races. Really dumb stuff. <laughs> and, and, you know, there are, but there are congressional races all over the country. People get very, uh, you know, focused on uh, f supporting congressional races in places where, um, where there, it's expensive to do. But we could focus anywhere in the country, yep. anywhere there's a seat yep. that could be uh, cr uh, transformed into a Florida seat. Um, we, we can focus on that. And so uh, I, I think this is a more affordable, practical, and doable, you know, really genuinely achievable strategy than uh, virtually any political strategy that I've seen. Yeah, yeah. We can be opportunistic. You know, we can go to some district that no one has ever heard of or cares about, but it's cheap and it's a good opportunity. And, you know, a vote's a vote. <laughs> exactly. And, and, you know, when you think about the, the people who've made the difference um, in the Senate, you know, it's it's you know someone from Alaska, it's someone from totally. you know from Lisa from Mikowski, Maine. It's so yes, yeah, you know, it's 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 completely yeah. random. It has does not have to do with the geography. It has to do with the votes.
Hey all, if you know me, you know I'm not that handy in the kitchen, and I have become a huge believer and booster of Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating a joy. It's so fast, you just pop that thing two minutes later, and you are eating a restaurant-quality, healthy meal, making you feel excellent about yourself. My favorite is the turkey chili with zucchini, and there is so much more to choose from. You never get tired of it. It fits any budget. It's fast, healthy. It is going to be the new factor in your life. Yes, I'm a fan. Head to factormeals.com slash yang50 and use code yang50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's code yang50 at factormeals.com slash yang50 to get 50% off your first box. Get Factor today. It's going to change the way you eat. Yeah, let's take advantage of our bizarro system. Um, (laughs) Now, some people listening to this are are having their interest peak. They're like, what? Um, So what defines a forwardist candidate uh, if, for, if people want to, to see whether it might be a fit for them. So we're doing two things that are really interesting. First of all, we, I, can, I can give you the, the rough outlines of, of what we're looking for in candidates. And I think that people, to some degree, can look at you and me and Christy Whitman and, and, and others who, who've run, uh, who are on the board and say, OK, I think I understand what a Ford candidate stands for. But first and foremost, we're interested in strengthening democracy and defending democracy. We believe in the Constitution. We believe in rule of law. You know, we believe that everyone is equal under the law and should be treated equally under the law. You know, we believe that there should be open primaries so, so that pe- the best people can emerge from that primary system. Uh, a number of people uh, in forward work very hard for ranked choice voting or, you know, top five voting or however, you know, whatever the the phrases are for this, but some system of voting that allows people who aren't part of that party system to rise up uh, and some kind of system that allows the the primaries to be more civil, uh, to be more positive than they are today, as opposed to winner take all. So so for the first part of who our candidates are is really that support for democracy, democratic reforms, anti-gerrymandering, and so forth. Um, The second part is that we want collaborative problem solvers. We want people who genuinely want the trains to run on time and it to be on budget. We want people who are looking for the best solutions, not just their solutions. And sometimes those solutions might be ones that have been floated by the Republicans or by the Democrats, or maybe they're entirely new and no one has ever heard of this solution before and it doesn't really fit in any bin, but it's a good solution and we should think about it. And so we want open-minded problem solvers. And I've been so impressed when I've been out talking to the people who are involved with Ford on a state level that we are attracting that sort of person, you know, really thoughtful, really hardworking and and intelligent people who are saying, how can I make society better? How can I make my community better and and solve those those key issues that are their problems? And if you think about it, most of our problems are really local problems. If we on a local level had great schools and safe streets and, you know, nice parks to take our kids and dogs to and, you know, felt that we were being well represented, had a good hospital there locally. Most of us would feel like our lives were pretty good. And so, you know, it's not all at that national level. We need candidates who can solve local problems as well as as a good mayor is worth his or her weight in gold. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. A good school board. As a parent, I mean, I've got uh, Chan in public school, like a good school board is worth its weight in gold. Exactly. And so then the last thing that we're looking for is candidates of good character, people who can genuinely be role models and who can restore that faith in government that that people have lost. We need people who are going to be ethical. We need people who are going to uh, bring out our be- better angels instead of trying to uh, win by appealing to our baser instincts. People who are actually trying to elevate the conversation, who are you know who are gracious and, and tolerant and maybe beyond tolerant, compassionate, who recognizes uh, you know other people's human dignity. 
And so those are those are the kinds of characteristics that we're looking for. And in terms of policy, we're going to have a really interesting process where we bubble up from the states and from our individual Ford members uh, online what you know what issues and what policies are most appealing and concerning to them. I think that that is going to make us unique among all of the policies, you know, among all of the parties, because, you know, where else can we actually say that the policies of a party are connected with the beliefs and the concerns of the members? I think both the Republican Party and Democratic Party have lost contact entirely, you know, with their membership. So we're uh, we're excited about doing that and we're going to be rolling that out in the next couple months. This podcast is sponsored by Helix Sleep. We sleep more than we do just about anything else. Even if you're hardworking, you know what I mean. Why sleep on a mattress that's made for lots of people when you can sleep on a mattress that's personalized to you? Just take the quiz at Helix Sleep and get a mattress sent to you that has a 100-night trial, yup, three months, and a 10 to 15 year warranty. My kids seek out the Helix mattress in the house. It's their favorite one. And I gotta say, it wasn't made for them. It was made for me. Don't wanna take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. It's going to make you healthier and more energetic. Do something that's actually going to improve your health. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash yang and use code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. I have Obviously, I mean, I, I love the vision um, and I'm incredibly grateful to you for stepping into this role and for your leadership. So people have a sense of it. Carrie's doing this for free. She's doing this out of love of country and patriotism. She's actually a donor. Um, so, you know, it's like, imagine putting both your time in and your resources in and your relationships in and everything else. I mean, that that's the kind of leader Carrie is. Uh, we're incredibly fortunate uh, to have you choose forward as a means to achieve this vision that you've had over the last number of years, which is to build a political home uh, for folks like you and me and legions of other independents who might not agree on everything, um, but certainly can agree uh, on the basics, uh, including the things that you just put out. And unfortunately, our two major parties are failing at the basics, <laughs> right, right and left. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's it's wild. Um, you know, I, like I come from the Democratic Party. Um, the Democratic Party is literally talking about championing democracy on one hand while canceling primaries on the other <laughs> and having no debates. You know, I mean, like it's um, it, uh, it, we, we live in a very, very difficult time. Um, and I think that the 300 local candidates plus could be more uh, could be the vanguard of a whole new generation of leaders uh, that might start locally, but as you say, could end up uh, in Congress or in national positions. Yeah. I think about that, that uh, I don't know whether it's a joke or a saying, uh, which is, you know, when was the, when is the best time to plant a tree? And the answer is 20 years ago. You know, I wish that we would have started this 20 years ago, but we need to start taking the first steps now. And I actually believe that in another year and another two years, this vision is very achievable. And by yeah. the time the next presidential race comes around, we're going to be ready and we'll be able to to field candidates all up and down the spectrum. But I don't think that it will ever be a lower priority for us to to focus on those low ba those down ballot uh, candidates, because it's so important. It's so important that every, it's always going to be important bit totally. of government is used for the bet for the betterment of the American people. Yeah, we're we're going to build a, 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 a like a whole ladder, uh, you know, and and it's uh, always vital to have people doing great work where we live, um, uh, and also to be developing uh, the the next generation. And over the last couple of years, uh, we already now have dozens of elected officials who are affiliating with Forward. Uh, state senators in Pennsylvania, state legislators in Arizona, 
uh, mayors, uh, and uh, mayors in Florida and Connecticut and uh, Colorado. So we have um, already the, this mini cadre of, uh, of officials, and then we're going to grow it tremendously this year. Uh, and then if someone turns the page on 25 when uh, they're looking around saying, hey, uh, what is forward? We might be able to point to literally at that point, like over 100 elected officials. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of Americans around the country who subscribe and are excited. Many have donated. Thank you for those of you who have donated. We have uh, recognition in South Carolina, um, Utah, Florida, like in, in different states uh, around the country, in different ways, like some of it's minor party recognition, um, some of it's more significant. In South Carolina, it's full. Um, I'm a, you know, I might be in South Carolina as, as this gets aired. <laughs> but in another, in another two or three years, we should have ballot access in every state. Yeah, and exactly. So, you know, so we're, we, we are adding another state to our list of places where we can have forward candidates on the ballot every couple months. So yep. we're, um, we're, we're rolling in our, and our volunteers are so excited and dedicated to what they're doing. So I, we would love for anyone who is interested in being a forward candidate at any level uh, to reach out to us. Um, we should have a, a cool uh, forward party email address for them right now. Uh, and I'm going to make it up. And by the time this airs, it's going to be real. Uh, candidates at forwardparty.com. Um, so just email candidates at forwardparty.com and then that will go to the team. It's like magic, digital magic, Carrie. Excellent. So Carrie, thank you for, again, being an awesome leader uh, and public servant uh, and operator. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be working with you in this role. Uh, we're going to build something profound. We're going to take uh, your story um, and then connect it to millions of other American stories. And then they're going to say, oh, wait, this is what I've been waiting for, too. Um, and we might be just in the nick of time. I agree with you. Like ideal time would have been 20 years ago, um, <laughs> but we're here now and uh, the uh, the country definitely needs this more than ever. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you for founding forward and thank you for bringing this group together. And we are, I am deeply excited about, you know, the future of this party and I'm hopeful for the, the future of America because people are coming together to support the democracy and the ideals that America stands for. Amen, Carrie. You know, let's go fight for the country. And for everyone who's been volunteering for Forward or donating or just paying attention, thank you. Uh, do go to forwardparty.com. Click on your state. Uh, there's stuff going on. Uh, we're hard at work and we'd love to have you as part of the movement. <laughs>